So good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining on this snowy morning. Uh, it's not too bad yet, right? Uh, and we are going to be talking about m missing a Messiah, uh, the different view on the Messiah or Messianic era uh, from the perspective of uh, various uh, um, <clears throat> uh, uh, places in Judaism, uh, Orthodox, uh, conservative reforms. So I'm going to share the screen now. Okay. Um, So I'm going to look first on the text. And we'll we'll read through, but like we always do, I will hey, stop. Weston, for you. I will stop and then we will um I just so you suggested the topic. Some of the paragraphs. Yeah. Okay. So <clears throat> a second temple period, Messiah and Rabbinic thought the doctrine of the Messiah in the Middle Ages and in modern Jewish. So, and of course, we know that uh, the, uh, I will make the screen smaller. Uh, we know that the Hebrew word for Messiah is Mashiach, right? So um, who wants to read this first paragraph, the word Messiah? The word Messiah is an anglization of the Latin Messiah, which is borrowed from, uh, I'm cut off on the right side. Can we tell oh, me? Do you not see? No. I can oh, see yeah. past uh, Greek, Huh, that is weird. If you tap at the top. You yeah, you, 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 you need to uh, diminish the um, uh, participant screen. Um, okay. Go to uh, gallery view. How do I do that? Um, there's like four boxes. So one is the line, then the larger box, then the like two next to each other, and then several boxes. Okay. <clears throat> that made it worse. <laughs> oh. Wait a minute. No, just because it changed the format. I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm making it worse. Is there? There's no way to get rid of the blue on the side, right? Um, no. no. Okay, wait. Let me go back to the other format. It won't do it now. What if I... Uh, okay, good, 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 good. Yeah, okay, good. Okay. The word Messiah is an anglicization of the Latin Messiah, which is borrowed from the Greek. You don't need to read Greek. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> an adaptation of the Aramaic Messiah. Um, a Aramaic is a Meshicha. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay, I didn't see the dots. Uh -huh. um, a translation of the Hebrew Hamelach, Hama Messiah, um, the anointed king a charismatically endowed descendant of David, who the Jews of the Roman period believed would be raised up by God to break the yoke of the heathen and to reign over a restored kingdom of Israel to which all the Jews of the exile would return. This is a strictly post-biblical concept. Even Haggai- Wait, let me stop. So what does it mean post-biblical concept? After the Torah, uh, after the Torah, after the Torah, yeah, it, it is mentioned in the Book of Prophets, uh, the Messiah, but uh, uh, definitely post the uh, Torah edict. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, even Haggai and Zechariah, who expected the Davidic kingdom to be renewed with a specific individual, Z Zerubbabel, Babel, at its head, thought of him only as a feature of the new age, not as the author or even agent of its establishment. One can, therefore, only speak of the biblical prehistory of messianism. It may be summarized as follows. Stage one, at the height of David's power, there appears the doctrine that the Lord had chosen David and his descendants to reign over Israel to the end of time and had also given him dominion over alien peoples. To quote 2 Samuel, all the arguments against dating this composition later than the age of David seemed forced. Right. Now, let me sing you uh, the prayer that we sing during Havdalah. All right. So at the, at the end of the Havdalah, what do we sing? After we do all the blessings and the uh, Shavuot Tov. 
Um, Eliyahu. Yeah, actually, before Shavuot, before we sing Shavuot, after we do all the blessings, we sing Eliyahu. So, Eliyahu Hanavi, Eliyahu Hajishbi, Eliyahu, Eliyahu, Eliyahu Gilati, Yirave Yamainu Yahu Eleinu, Imashiach Ben David. So, what do we sing? Imashiach Ben David. Messiah, son of David. Son of David, exactly. And that is what the rabbis believe. So, that, you know, it's kind of uh, briefly uh, says here in this part uh, that uh, um, uh, David uh, is uh, the father of Messiah, right? So that he'll come after, uh, he came after uh, David, which is, of course, it's not a proven fact. It's just, uh, uh, it's just a saying, but um, um and we don't know if, if King David had really elevated himself to such a status or uh, were there the rabbis who elevated him um, or just, uh, you know, the, uh, the writings that he left behind. Uh, actually, it was interesting. Um, uh, I have a Hebrew when we study Talmud every day, we try every Tuesday uh, from my uh, rabbinic school. And uh, we are still in Brachot, in the first the book of uh, Talmud, uh, when it, it uh, talks about the uh, time when you're supposed to say Shema. Anyways, as uh, oftentimes in Talmud, uh, the rabbis start discussing one topic and then they deviate to uh, completely so far uh, and discuss things that have nothing to do uh, with a, a initial point of a discussion, but then somehow they kind of come back in any case. So one of the paragraphs that we read was uh, about King David, how he was so pious that um, he would uh, um, have the, his liar uh, wake him up at 12 o'clock at night so that he can uh, study uh, the text. And again, it, it said that um, uh, the, 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 the that David said about himself or something like that, I'm so pious. So it's like, if you are so pious, you know, you're so humble, then you shouldn't be saying that about yourself, right? So why am I bringing it up is because again, we don't know if uh, um, rabbis were influenced by the literature that was left by King David himself or truly he was uh, so pious and so, um, uh, regarded uh, by uh, uh, these uh, by his uh, uh, surrounders. Okay, uh, somebody else. Uh, okay. For this I sing your praise, O Lord, among the nations and him. him. He who grants wondrous victories to his king and deals graciously with his anointed Messiah. Mm -hmm. with David and with the offspring evermore. David is here as Saul was before him from Sam. And as he expected descendants of his to be after him, the Lord anointed in the sense that he was anointed as a sign of consecration to the Lord in Kings. Not, of course, in the sense of the Messiah described as the beginning of this article, because anointing is an act of consecration, Deuteronomy, Isaiah speaks of Cyrus and the Lord anointed in the beauty, purely derived sense of non-Israelite king chosen by the Lord for a great destiny and a great mission in Isaiah. Thus stage one or stage one of the prehistoric prehistory of the Messiah, mess, Messiahism is the doctrine of that David presents uh, present position of power will endure throughout his lifetime and be inherited by an endless chain of succeeding links in his dynasty. Stage two began with the collapse of David's empire after the death of Solomon. There arose the doctrine of hope and that the house of David would again reign over Israel as well as Judea and again, exercise dominion over neighboring nations, this hope was expressed. Okay, great. So thank you, Ellen. So what do we understand from this paragraph? What, what, what is the main theme, like in this uh, uh, last uh, several uh, sentences? What's the main theme? 
that the doctrine of David will continue and it will and it also includes not only Israel but beyond Israel. Right. But um, beyond that, uh, again, based on what we read, when uh, uh, did the whole idea of messianism and uh, the Messiah uh, came to for, to life? To you know, when people started, uh, when Rabbi started talking about it, it wasn't during the reign of David, right? No, no, and. It wasn't even like immediately after. So when when do we see the the signs of it? After the death of Solomon, no. Right, but even more so after the destruction of the second temple, right? So it's the expression of hope, the the belief in the fact that Messiah will come and the, the world will be better for Jews um, is based on the prolonging of the exiles and suffering. So it's uh, um, then understandable why uh, the rabbis and the people uh, would turn to then um, the idea of this uh, um, person uh, who would come and uh, redeem them, right? This was written, I'm confused. This was written before the destruction of the second temple, but after the first? Right, so the, the, um, the seeds to the, the, the whole concept of um, Messiah, of Mashiach, were prior to the destruction of the second temple, but it, it took especially um, a strong uh, concept after the destruction of the second temple, and we we'll talk about that. Okay. Um, okay, so uh, Judy, are you still there? Can you read this? Probably. Sure. Okay. Uh, probably by reinterpretation of compositions like Psalm 18 in a prophetic sense, and in so many words, in prophecies like uh, Amos, uh, the phrase a Ju Judahite uh, interpolation, and the Israelites will seek their King David, uh, that's Ezekiel especially verses 24 and uh, I'll skip that part. <laughs> yeah, you got, uh, and for everybody, you don't need to read the numbers of verses. Okay. So, so in other words, why they say post biblical. So it's uh, in the Torah, of course, there is no mention of uh, messianic um, era or Mashiach, nothing at all about that, because, you know, we're still in the breaks of uh, entering the land of Israel, right? So there's still uh, the bright future, but already in the uh, prophets, so like in Amos, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Hosea, um, Isa, uh, even though it's not spelled, you know, by saying that the, the Mashiach will come, but they, there is a hint already on the, you know, the kingdom of David will be restored. So in other words, why do uh, those prophets refer to the kingdom of David is because um, uh, this was the, probably the most um, um, uh, like a, the Renaissance period for for the uh, Jews in Israel, right? Because uh, Israel, uh, because they, King David uh, uh, restored the power. He made the Jerusalem uh, a thriving capital. Right, and uh, he had captured uh, much of the land, um, and the, the life of uh, um, Israelites were quite pros prosperous. Um, so, therefore, in those um, uh, the, all those all these prophets refer to the restoration of the kingdom of David. Okay, uh, stage stage three uh, stage three. As I um, Isaiah, thank you. Isaiah, mm -hmm. shifting of the emphasis from the perpetuity of the dynasty to the qualities of the future king. The foundation of his throne will be justice. He will be distinguished by his zeal for justice. And finally, he will be charismatically endowed for sensing the, wrong, the rights and wrongs of a case and for executing justice. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's see, but also, let's see, also Isaiah, and in particular, uh, where the origins of this idea are discussed, the um, Emmanuel prophecy in Isaiah is completely irrelevant. 
So far as one can see in the echoes of ancient Canaanite Ugaritite, Uruguay, you are Ugaritic, mythology that have been discovered. There are as dubious in those in the figure of the ancient of days uh, in Daniel. Without stage three in its biblical prehistory, the development of the post-biblical idea of the uh, Messiah, Messiah would not have been possible. Right. So um, Mashiach is, I know I was confusing, because in Hebrew it's Mashiach, in English it's Messiah, right? Um, and the second temple, but let's see how much we have. Uh, okay, not that, big, not that much. Uh, second temple period. Um, let's see, who didn't go? Ilana? The title Messiah in Hebrew Mashiach is a designation of the eschatological personality does not exist in the Old Testament. It occurs only from the time of the second temple after the Old Testament period. However, for ancient Judaism, the idea of eschatological, what is it? Um, the, uh, the, the uh, uh, salvation in terms of uh, um, the re redemption, the uh, um, uh, complete redemption. Eschatological salvation was more important than the concept of Messiah. Hence, there are books from the second temple period where the Messiah doesn't occur, even if they refer to eschatological salvation. Such a book, for instance, is the book of Tobit, in which the salvation of Jerusalem, the returns of the diaspora, and the conversion of nations to, to the God of Israel is described, but personal Messiah is lacking. The same also applies to the book Wisdom of Ben, Sirah, and probably the book of Daniel. In the latter, the messianic figure of the son of man is explained as a symbol for the holy ones or saints of the most high. In the assumption of Moses chapter 10, the eschatological figure is the angel of God, but a human agent of the salvation is not mentioned. It seems also that in the more ancient form of the Amidah, a personal Messiah was not mentioned, but only the hope of the return from the diaspora and the building of the eschatological Jerusalem and the temple. Even in such ancient Jewish prayer, where the concept of Messiah occurs, the word Messiah is lacking. Good. Um, we'll look at the different texts. Now, now um, in another text, you will also see uh, the, um, um, what the, uh, uh, the, they refer to in terms of Amida. Uh, but let me give you uh, first the uh, uh, concept of Amida. So, uh, before we move on, it's very important to understand the differences. So uh, when we uh, say the Atagibor, uh, right, uh, the uh, uh, second prayer of the Amida, first is Davot, right? Um, so what do we say in Givrot? Uh, what do we say in uh, Reform Sidurim? Cool. What do we say in conservative and orthodox? Hametim. What's the difference between Hametim and Hakol, if anyone knows? Belief in Moshiach. Hametim is referring to everyone coming back to life and going to Israel. The, the righteous ones, right. Yeah. So, uh, and, and again, we'll look later, but I just That's wanted to, because, because, we read, because we read about that already, yeah, you know. I wanted to, uh, to have this very clear understanding, why um, do we use hakol instead of metim? Mihaye hakol meaning, you know, revives everything to life. For example, the flowers uh, bloom again, you know, the, the, with the spring, the earth comes back, right? Even though it dies, but uh, then they come back to life. 
we we don't believe in the, the eschatological. Uh, that's the word, like the the, the actual re, re, not not as I said, not redemption, but uh, reviving. Re, 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 what what's the noun from that? Re, uh, revival. Revival of the death. Uh, so that is not something that Reformed Jews mm -hmm. believe in, right? And therefore, uh, the Mishkan Tefillah, the Reformed Sidurim, uh, changed the Mechayei Hakol uh, to, uh, from Mechayei Mitim, uh, revives the dead, meaning literally revives the, those who are dead, uh, to Mechayei Hakol. Um, so that that is one of the uh, you know important things to remember with uh, with the change. Also, uh, uh, there is another something change in the Amidah that we will look in in our prayer books the, in, a little bit later. Um, so here is uh, Rabbi Enoch. You know, yes, if we learn from Ramban uh, Rambam in Reform Judaism. We do. We reference Rambam, right. and yet Rambam is one of the sources of Moshiach. I don't get that. Um, we will. I, I understand. Can hold that question because we will look uh, into that. Uh, look, uh, but in general, in Reform Judaism, we also believe in observing Shabbat. Do we observe it the same way as uh, non-Reform Jews? Do no. So we may. You know, we may accept some concepts, we may, we may believe in some concepts, and yet we alter them, uh, not necessarily because of, uh, you know, the convenience, but because it just makes more sense for us as modern Jews. Again, Rambam has lived uh, 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 centuries ago, right? So um, uh, we're trying to adopt uh, uh, halakha or uh, a certain uh, uh, philosophy even of, uh, uh, let's say, you know, um, medieval times to a philosophy of the, of the modern times uh, because uh, uh, progress uh, continues. So, um, Sarita, can you read the Messianic idea in Judaism here? Uh, belief in the eventual coming of the Mashiach is a basic and fundamental part of traditional Judaism. It is part of Rambam's 13 principles of faith the minimum requirements of Jewish belief. In the Shmona Esrei prayer, recited three times daily. Uh, no, Shmona, for... Shmona is, we all understand, right? Shmona is the prayer is the same as uh, Amidah. And we also call it the Filah. Why Shmona Esrei? Because uh, uh, during the uh, weekdays, uh, um, not on Shabbat, we recite 18 plus, uh, there was added 19. So Shmona Esrei is the actual Amidah or the Filah. Okay, you can go on. Okay. Uh, recited three times daily, we pray for all of the elements of the coming of the Mashiach, in gathering of the exiles, restoration of the religious courts of justice, an end of wickedness, sin, and heresy, reward to the righteous, rebuilding of Jerusalem, restoration of the line of King David, and restoration of temple service. Right, keep going. Aren't we all supposed to also have a direct connection with Hashem? Meaning during the prayer? Oh, this is only for the prayer. They're, they're talking okay. about those mentioning. Yeah, the, the, yeah the I got the it. Concept of Messiah during the uh, uh, Amidah. Mm -hmm. Right, because if we were talking about when Mashiach comes, there are other elements. Right. Okay. Modern scholars suggest that the Messianic concept was introduced later in the history of Judaism during the age of the prophets. They note that the Messianic concept is not explicitly mentioned anywhere in the Torah. The so first five words, book, Thank you. Books. So in other words, we, we, we read just, it was a little bit more complicated text, right? The first one that I gave you, uh, it just uh, simplifies uh, what we had uh, read in that other material. Okay, keep going. You read well. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> However, traditional Judaism maintains that the Messianic idea has always been a part of Judaism. The Mashiach is not mentioned explicitly, explicitly in the Torah because the Torah was written in terms that all people could understand and the abstract concept of a distant spiritual future reward was beyond the comprehension of some people. However, the Torah contains several references to the end of days, which is actually the definition of the eschatological part. Somebody right. asked, it's the end of days. Acharit hayamin which is the time of the Moshiach. Thus, the concept of Moshiach was known in the most ancient times. 
Uh, how about Mark? Can Mark take over? Um, we're over there. The term Moshiach. The term Moshiach is one who will be anointed as king in the end of days. Oh, okay, hold on, let me stop you there. So who was the first one to be anointed? And we read again, it was just a little bit more complicated in the previous text. Who was the, uh, the first anointed? Hmm? Was it David? The son of David. Actually, David. no. Actually, Salmon, but um, the, who was the first king of Israel? Saul. Oh. Oh. Shaul. Uh, Shaul. So um, he was anointed by uh, uh, Samuel, hmm. right? Sa Samuel, the prophet Samuel, the, if you read in the book of Samuel, uh, he, he, was, uh, he had the task uh, he, by uh, the Israelites. And by the way, um, maybe one day we'll uh, discuss the book of uh, Samuel, but uh, Israel, Israelites started demanding the king. And God was not very happy with that because that's a book. Why would you? Why would you make yourself a king? I'm 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 the king of kings, right? Why, why would you make yourself someone who will uh, have you uh, pay the taxes so that uh, he will have uh, the palace and the uh, chariots and the you know and you will have to uh, send your sons and daughters to serve the king. Why would you want to have the king? But no, Israelites uh, said no. We want the king, just like all other. Uh, people have the king and so God said fine you want a king here you go so um, uh, Samuel was uh, looking for the perfect candidate and uh, found Shaul who was uh, you know very tall and a charismatic person uh, as it turns out he uh, had uh, um, probably what we would call in modern times the bipolar disorder uh, towards the end of his um, uh, kingship but uh, uh, when Saul I mean when Samuel found him uh, he anointed uh, him before the people. And uh, um, do we know what the actual act of anointment is? What is used to anoint someone? Oil. Oil. Pour the oil mm -hmm. over, the, over the head. <laughs> uh, and so, um, so uh, Saul was anointed. Um, but uh, after Saul, uh, who came to power? David. 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 Exactly, David, right. Uh, David, but uh, he wasn't uh, Saul's king. Do we know how he came to power? Why would, uh, why would he inherit the uh, uh, kingdom? Good warrior. Uh, good warrior, that's true. Uh, that's how he got promoted by uh, Saul. But then Saul started fearing him. But uh, how, uh, I, I mean, uh, he had to be able to claim the throne officially. So how was he able to claim the throne? Was it through Saul's son? Uh, daughter. He, he married oh. Saul's uh, daughter, Michal. Oh, okay. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, some, some say that he was involved with Jonathan as well. But that was prior to marriage of Michal. Um, and then he, he sent her away, but didn't divorce. He didn't give her a divorce, so she couldn't actually marry. And then he called her back. Um, by the way, excellent book. If I can recommend um, the, that's uh, in actually pretty close to the uh, true history. I think it's um, the um, something, the, oh, this, uh, the, secret, the Secret Chord. Excellent book. Uh, strongly recommend The Secret Chord. So, um, yes, yeah, so he came uh, to power after uh, Saul died. Uh, and then uh, uh, after David, the uh, uh, kingdom went to, the power went to his son, Solomon, right? And uh, that was uh, his son from Bathsheba, whom he sort of uh, stole from his uh, other warriors. So anyway, so in, just getting back to anointment. Uh, we're talking about the, the anointment just like it was done with priests or with um, uh, the uh, uh, kings of Israel. Okay, Mark, I'm sorry, go on. Okay, the word Mashiach does not mean savior. The notion of an innocent divine or semi-divine being will, be will sacrifice himself to save us from the consequences of our own sins is purely Chris Christian concept that is no basis in Jewish thought. Unfortunately, this Christian concept has been deeply ingrained into the English word Messiah, 
that this English word can no longer be used to refer to the Jewish concept, the word Mashiach will be used throughout this page. Some Gentiles have told me that uh, <laughs> the term Messiah is related to the Hebrew word Oshia, Savior, because they sound similar, but similarity is not as strong as it appears to one unfamiliar with Hebrew. The Hebrew word Mashiach comes from the root word Mem Shin Chet, which means, which means to paint, smear, or anoint the word Mashiach comes from the, word, the root Yad Shin Ayan, which means to help or save. The only letter these roots ha have in common is the Shin, the most common letter in the Hebrew language. The M sound as the beginning of the word Moshiach, Savior, is common prefix used to turn a verb into a noun. For example, the verb Tzva, to be commanded, becomes Mitzvah, commandment, saying that the Moshiach is related to Messiah is a bit like saying that ring is related to surfing because so, they yeah. both end in ing. Yes, yeah, so it's, it's a little uh, technical. Um, so again, this is the reiteration of uh, uh, the fact that the Mashiach is a descendant from King David. All right, let me look at uh, another reading that has to do with reform Judaism. Um, so let me see if this is okay. Here we go. So that would, I hope, answer Sarita your question. So this is a pretty uh, easy text to read. Um, who didn't go yet? Let me see. Um, I think everyone read. Oh, Don didn't read yet. Answered by Rabbi Jewish, Joseph B. Messler. In the Jewish prayer book, the Siddur, there are references to an end of days. The temple in Jerusalem will be rebuilt. The dead who were righteous will be resurrected. And a figure known as the Messiah, or in Hebrew, Mashiach, will restore Israel to newfound glory. The word Mashiach means anointed one, and it refers to someone who is descended from King David, who was anointed with oil as king. So we already know that. Feels good, right? <laughs> okay. Ref Reform Judaism teaches that in the partnership with God, it is up to us to make the world into a place of peace and justice, and that we cannot wait, nor do we expect a personal Messiah. The principles of reform- Wait, wait hold on, let me stop you there. So in the, some other texts, and um, I, I just don't want us to read uh, too much of a repetition. In other uh, uh, material, it suggests that uh, uh, there are a couple uh, uh, situations where in, the Messiah will come either, and it, of course it's uh, uh, hypothesizing, either it's when the people are so wicked and the world is just going down the hill and we absolutely need Messiah to come uh, to make the world a better place, or the opposite, when everyone is good and uh, that's when we deserve for Messiah to come. So no one really knows for sure. Okay, keep going. Seems that you know, that Rabbi? There's, there's another teaching that it's when everyone recognizes that they have a purpose on earth. Yes. Which is to feed from the reform perspective. Right. I mean, That's from the Orthodox, that we will create a place of peace and justice because we each have the same thing the reform talk about, which is a spark within us. That spark um, is our purpose. And when we recognize it, even if we don't believe in Moshiach, intrinsically, because we have that spark, that shard inside of us that propels us to do good in the world, that we are, whether we're agnostic or we're believers, we're kind of compelled to do tikkun olam and to do the things that are purposeful for us. Right, and, and we'll read about that, but the difference is in reform and, uh, and we'll, we'll, again, we'll, later on, we'll read about that. The difference is that Reform don't believe in Messiah as a person who will, you know, A, will Mikhaim Etim will revive the dead, and B is actual person. Will the Reform Judaism believed in Messianic era, that mm -hmm. time when we are 
all good. So uh, Dan, keep going. Okay, uh, I was just gonna say, for reading on it, it seems that you point about the two very diverse views of uh, Mashiach, you know, either the world's about to be destroyed or the world's perfected, seems also so cultural and in, ingrained in the liturgy that we as Jews have compared to some of the other faiths out there. So just an interesting. Right. Uh-huh. Reform Judaism teaches that in partnership with God, it is up to us to make the world into a place of peace and justice, and that we cannot wait, nor do we expect a personal Messiah. The principles of Reform Judaism state, we continue to have faith in that in spite of the unspeakable evils committed against our people and the sufferings endured by others. The partnership of God and humanity will ultimately prevail. We bring Torah into the world when we strive to fulfill the highest ethical mandates in our relationships with others and with all of God's creation. Partners with God in Tikkun Olam, repairing the world, are called to help bring nearer the messianic age. We seek dialogue and joint action with people of other faiths in the hope that together we can bring peace, freedom, justice to our world. We are obligated to pursue doc justice and righteousness uh, and to narrow the gap between the affluent and the poor to act against discrimination and oppression, to pursue peace, to welcome the stranger, to protect the earth's biodiversity and natural resources, and to redeem those uh, physical, economic, and spiritual, in economic, spiritual uh, bondage. In so doing, we reaffirm social action and social justice as a central prophetic focus of traditional reformed Jewish belief and practice. So that, that's why the Iraq, uh, this organization, and the, the whole social justice and Tikkun Olam is uh, so um, deeply rooted in reform Judaism, because that is like the substitution for the uh, Messiah, or rather the Messianic era. And uh, one last paragraph then. In the 19th century, the earliest reform rabbis rejected all of the end of days beliefs as superstitious and anti-intellectual. They made a radical change instead of praying for a Messiah. Okay, never... So in other words, they rejected the eschatolo eschatological uh, uh, concept, right? Right. Mm -hmm. We now pray for a messianic age. In Hebrew, the prayer for our ancestors, instead of praying for Goel or Redeemer, the Reform Siddur refers to Galula or Redemption. Right. These changes have been- so, so that is, sorry, let me stop you. So one uh, significant one is, uh, as we said, instead of Mechaye meeting, we have Mechaye Hakol. And also um, the uh, Geula, instead of Goel, the, instead of Redeemer, we have Redemption. So as a, as a general for everybody. Mm -hmm. The changes have been maintained from the earliest reform innovations and continue today. Right. So yeah. how do you know when the messianic era arrives? Uh, well, we believe that uh, in, in, in Reform Judaism, uh, we're, we're continuously striving for it, right? But uh, um, I don't know if there is a, a specific time. That we're can, can I ask a, a question? When, 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 all, when, when, when uh, there will be communism in, around the world, I'm just kidding. Just kidding was a joke. <laughs> no, no, no. When all people will be equal and uh, everyone will have uh, um, everyone will have uh, enough to eat and to drink and that you know and uh, um, everybody will be regarded like I said as equal. So. Right, and, and I like what Sarita said just before about you know we all have the spark within us. It's a matter of uniting those sparks. There's a prayer I think. I think it was actually in Gates of Prayer about reuniting the shards of light, which I think is almost a Kabbalistic uh, mm -hmm. view of the whole thing. I, I just have a, um, a quick question because uh, Redeemer um, in the song En Kelohenu is referred to Moshienu. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're talking about the roots of the word Messiah. And mm -hmm. is that all in the same root? Uh, and is I, no. I, it struck no. me. Uh, Ila, Ilana wants to answer. It's not. <laughs> Moshe Ainu is from uh, Yesha, which is why uh, Yud Shin Ain. And Mashiach is from uh, uh, Bem 
שינח anointed right to put on to put on anointed we read in uh, the, the previous text I think Mark read that uh, the, the difference remember so actually yeah. it, come, it comes back I'm like oh let's give it up but no it, it, it's a smear to smear a smear or to anoint it said right in the text right so yeah and one oh, coincidental um, it, it, it's it's a coincidence that the words sound alike but they really have nothing to do with each other yeah, you have many of those in Hebrew. Yes, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> um, okay, let me uh, finish with a couple of things. So, by the way, you can also um, Google the uh, on in Chabad or read in Chabad uh, their perspective on the personality of Mashiach. I don't want to do that now, but you can totally do it on your own time. Um, it's uh, also an interesting read, but uh, I want to show you this uh, funny. Uh, episode from the Jews are coming. And I will pause and Elana, I'm counting on you to help me to translate. So, hold on. Sorry, 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 sorry. Sorry, hold on. Wait, wait. Okay, so basically he is uh, cursing the uh, uh, the flies right now. Okay, I'm not going to translate exactly what he said. Yes, yes. Who is now coming? Hello. Hello, is Abby there? Dad, yes. What's going on? Are you Abby? Do you know anybody else here? I just want to make sure, I just want to, uh, I just want to announce to all the people that I came. And your name uh, uh, is here on, on the top of my list. What is this? Uh, donations or something? Um, uh, go away. No, 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 no. No, 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 excuse me. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't introduce myself. I'm a Mo I'm I'm Mashiach. I came. What is Ilana, what is Mithangel? I have no idea. So I can basically a pretender. A pretender, okay. So fly fly from here, go away from here, pretender. Wait, 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 you don't believe me? Uh, I can prove it. Uh, how are you going to prove it? Uh, finally, I killed that uh, fly and uh, Mashiach is asking, are you sure? Yeah. Wait, so are you really truly the Mashiach? Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe it. Do you know how long we've been waiting for you? <laughs> no, Ari, leave him alone. He's really the Messiah. <laughs> Shut your mouth. Give us something else that is like another miracle. Hmm, and Mashiach is saying, do you have some something uh, where somebody who is uh, dead in your house so that I can uh, revive, <laughs> bring bring back to life? Wait, what is that? Is it the um, um, uh, VCR? I'm sorry, is that oh, VCR is not working here. Yeah. Wait, 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 it's not exactly my uh, uh, field, but uh, hold on. <laughs> Did you try to take it out of the, uh, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, for the uh, the oh, plug yeah. and put it back in. No. Jake, take it out and put it back on. Oh, it works. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the computer? Oh, the computer. Oh, the computer. Oh, the computer. 
I know, I know that so you had a, a difficult period in the last uh, 2,000 years or so, but from now on, everything will be fine. What, what do you mean is everything is going to be okay? What are you going to do? And he's like, uh, the father says, uh, shut your mouth, you, uh, the, ch the, the, the child cop. Nice way to talk to Mashiach. <laughs> לא, 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 זו שאלה הוגנת לגמרי. את הפסוק, וגר זה אבן כבש. אוקיי, לא, הוא טוטלי נכון. אתה זוכר את המילה, ואז גם הולף יתגלה עם הלאם. הולף יתגלה עם הלאם. <laughs> hey, Zave, he's talking to his neighbor. How many times did I tell you not to bring in the animals to the, <laughs> to the building? <laughs> what is Coxil? Ilana, what's Coxil? I don't know. I just see it written. All right, so what are he's like cursing him? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't mean that, you know, about you or a neighbor. What I was uh, referring to... That there will be a, a, a peace and friendship between no. all the people and the freedom between uh, uh, the Greek and the French and the uh, uh, Arabs and the Sudani. What did you say? Wait, wait, people, maybe I wasn't right about uh, the word here or there, but what I really mean is that at the end of the day will be all peace everywhere. <sighs> Okay. Is that peace? Shalom, yes. shalom al kadur ha'aretz. And all the world will be peace. Tell me, Moshiach, are you a lefty? Tell me, Moshiach, are you a lefty? No, I'm a political. No, I'm a political. Same thing with the previous one said, but he was on the, uh, uh, on the donkey. <laughs> so... That's, <laughs> that's the end. Um, anyway, I, I it, was, uh, it was like chopped, but uh, I hope that you got to appreciate this coming of Messiah to the uh, M M Moroccan family in Israel. <laughs> Ilana, what do you think? Well, it uh, doesn't uh, bode well for the Moroccan families, right? <laughs> But uh, um, it shows us very prejudiced. Yeah, I, I know. But you know, the Jews Israelis, you know, they they hate the the um, people who came from uh, Morocco, Iraq. They have very bad memories, and they hate the Arabs. So the minute he said he wants to bring peace with the Arabs, the guy shot him. Yep, that's sad. Yeah, there is a, Ilana, there's another episode actually I was watching yesterday. My God, when I started watching those, uh, the Jews are coming, I can't stop. Uh, episode, uh, the first Druzy is uh, uh, coming to, um, is Midgayas, um, um, coming to serve in the army. And <laughs> so the reception he gets from the uh, uh, lieutenant who is supposed to give him the, uh, the weapon. Anyway, so, but back to Mashiach. Um, I mean, <laughs> What, what this uh, episode shows us is that uh, uh, not just the Moroccan family, but uh, anyways, right, that's even, right. even yeah, that's what it shows, right? Right, right, right. And also, you know, even those of us who do believe in the coming of Messiah or Mashiach, uh, not exactly, uh, you know, may, maybe not exactly be ready to recognize when uh, <laughs> the, the Messiah will come, um, unfortunately. Um, so um, I personally like the concept of uh, Reform Judaism of uh, belief in the Messianic era because I, you know, again, for myself, I personally have a hard time uh, believing in the resurrection of the dead, even if they were righteous in uh, their life. But um, 
uh, it's really up to you to, to form your opinion and uh, there is no judgment. It's just, uh, you know, it's all the, the matter of what you personally believe in and uh, what makes you uh, comfortable and makes your life uh, more um, faithful, I guess, uh, because all of us have our own way of uh, how we believe in God and our own faith. As a matter of fact, I was uh, chatting with a friend early in the morning who had a open heart surgery a couple of months ago, I think by now. And um, so she, she asked me, she, she said, as, as a rabbi, do you have more faith now that you have this, uh, you know, mm. terrible disease? Or, is, it, is it easier for you? <laughs> um, because you, you have a stronger faith and uh, I don't think it's easier for me. You know, it's, I mean, I, like any other person, uh, like any of you who dealt with, uh, and then a few of you here, you know, dealing with a uh, uh, difficult, uh, or used to deal with a difficult uh, uh, diagnosis, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, um, it really doesn't matter whether you're clergy or not. Um, and uh, you just um, try to be strong and you try to uh, find uh, some solace in the faith uh, and uh, that's why I said earlier that, uh, you know, it's really a very personal thing in what we believe. And, uh, you know, even if you are a Reformed Jew, it doesn't mean that you can't believe in the coming of uh, Mashiach, the actual coming of Mashiach, because, uh, you know, in Reformed Judaism, we believe in uh, um, uh, making the decisions and uh, uh, believing in something based on the knowledge and uh, um, I hope that you will continue uh, to uh, explore this topic because it is a very um, a very interesting and philosophical really topic so I'm grateful for everybody joining me today uh, and I hope that you have you. a great great week thank you and you yeah. take care rabbi be well be well good thank you, you. Thank you.